Tip for Tennessee. We had a report of a domestic disturbance between a male and female. The last information that we had, the female said that the male just put hands on her. The last time I responded to this residence, things actually escalated because of our presence. So we had to detain everyone in the house because people started charging at us and stuff. But that's not Trooper Lay's only concern. The suspect has been arrested for domestic before in the past. There's a good chance that, you know, he could run. So Chase, radio won't work. Lay finally gets through to dispatch using his phone. Uh, looks like a native male, blue jeans, blue sweatshirt. But the suspect already has a head start. And Lay can't wait for backup. I continue to look for him because I'm going to find him. I'm going to do my job and catch him. And I just take the rest for, you know, where we're at. But finding him in this densely wooded area won't be easy. There's a lot of area to cover there, a lot of areas that were unknown. There's buildings, trailers, you know, we don't know if he's armed, and I'm going to treat him as if he's armed, and he could ambush us at any point, because we just don't know where he is. me off. Well, we'll find him. She'll tell us who he is. I'm going to interview her, see what exactly happened, find out who he is. He's not going to be able to hide long. Fairbanks is pretty small, and he's not going to hide out here in the, the wilderness all night. Trooper James Eister joins Lay to check with the woman who called in. What happened today? Um, I woke up, and, and he freaked out. He's like, you're not laying in bed next to me. I jumped in the shower. He came in the bathroom, grabbed all my stuff, and I had to jump out of the shower. And then he started choking me so hard, and he threw me to the ground. He's like, I'm going to kill you. I told him I'm over it. I'm on a divorce because I can't have someone putting hands on me like this. He's violent. All right, I'm going back to post, but we're going to get this guy. Thanks. All right, thanks. I'm going to go take one more look down the road real quick to see if I can run into him. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Right. See you later. You definitely got to be ready to roll with the punches here in Alaska. The radio wasn't working correctly, and that's a huge issue. And backup is far away. There's a lot of uh, lot of area to cover there, and at that time, I think he was just too far gone. We tried. We were still fighting. A few weeks later, troopers get just that chance. He acted up again. We responded for a domestic violence call at the same residence, and he ran. And uh, I personally drove around the block until I found him. Trooper Lee's persistence pays off, putting this suspect in custody. Well, you know, as a law enforcement officer, you, you kind of get upset when the person gets away, but I've learned with experience that you're going to find them. It's a very rewarding feeling when you find that person and you take them to jail. It's great, so I'm excited. Hopefully he's learning his lesson. So. The man is charged with two counts of assault and violating his conditions of release and could face up to two and a half years of jail time. Across town, on the rural outskirts of Fairbanks, 
2037. My name is Trooper Eister, uh, Jim Eister. Before I came up here, I worked for New York City Police Department. I basically led my squad in robbery arrests and focus on violent street-level crimes and stuff like that. And half of my friends and family, when I told them I was moving to Alaska, they thought I was crazy and I lost my mind. The big thing up here is self-sufficiency. You're the law. You deal with uh, crime and criminals and investigations, largely in part on an independent basis. You don't have a forensics team to come out and process a crime scene for you. Um, let me just see what's going on here real quick. He spots something awry. 37, I'll be able to pull off on Cushman. A suspicious SUV parked in a secluded parking lot. Hey, big boy. How's it going, man? Not too bad. You all right? Yeah. Let's see you sleeping in here. Who's, whose dog is this? My dog. It is? Yeah. Can you stick your window down for me just a little bit, man? Are you guys you guys just hanging out today, or what's going on, man? Just hanging out. Yeah? Is this your car? Yeah. Okay. Whose greasy clothes is that? I don't know. That's why we pulled down in here to see. I said, what's that down there? Did you guys leave him there? No. No, they were down here. You guys have your ID on you? I, 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 I don't. Okay. It's okay to be hanging out here, right? Yeah, yeah, I just, I just, you look like you were not doing so well. Not when you said you are talking to You know? Yeah? Yeah, talking. Okay. I'm letting my dog run. Yeah? All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Stay out of trouble. Okay. Okay, man. Let's see what we got here. 37. If you could just run a uh, 29 on both of them. Hey, sir. Yes, sir. Can I just talk for one minute? Just going out real quick for me, right? You don't have any weapons on you, do you? No. Okay, just going out here real quick. Why am I under that? Okay, I'll explain everything to you in just a minute, okay? 37, I've got him detained. Apparently, you got a couple of warrants, partner. You know anything about that? Hey, man. Yeah. You all right? No. Do you know anything about these warrants? Huh? No? Go to the front of the car, okay? Yes, sir. You want to have a seat on the bumper for me? Dude, you got a handcuff key around your neck. Why do you got a handcuff key around your neck, man? It's just a key to me. Oh. That's a handcuff key. A lot of people have them. Yeah. Why do you have that? Do you have any more handcuff keys on you? No. But he does have other items of interest. You want to uh, tell me what's in here? Do you mind if I open it? I do. It's your call. Come on. Come on. Can I just give her my jacket? No. Come on. Without consent, Trooper Eister can't search the pouch on scene. So, what are we talking about? I haven't done anything yet. Do you want to smoke your cigarette while we talk for a minute? Please. Give yourself a good smoke, all right? Appreciate that. Before we move any further, is there any contraband in your vehicle? I you know it. Not that you know of? That doesn't sound very convincing. Why don't you want to tell me what's in there? I, I just... Uh, I, I don't lie. You've given me no reason to treat you anything but nice. But I still got a job to do. It's nothing personal. It's just business. So I'm going to do it. Eister decides to seize the pouch and the vehicle pending a search warrant. If there's contraband, you can have a problem with that. I'm going to talk to him for a minute, okay? Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll take her out of the car and seize the vehicle. Yeah. With another set of eyes on the suspect, Eister turns his attention to the passenger. I'm going to open it up, okay? There's nothing that can stick me in here, is there? Okay. She comes up clean. We'll have one of them give you a ride with the dog. The pair gets a free ride back to town. But the suspect's luck seems to be getting worse. This is Bolo from yesterday. She said smarter than SUV. Yeah, this matches the description. Trooper Tilly matches the description of his vehicle to a slew of recent robberies. Check out the description. Oh, yeah. His vehicle fits the description. He fits the description. He's a burglary suspect now. Good stand up for me, man. 
Yeah, they're a little snug. If convicted, he faces up to six months in jail for violating his probation and could face additional penalties if anything comes up in the pending search. All right, man, I appreciate it. Days later, the search warrant comes in. Let's see what we find. Eister's first target is the small pouch the man was carrying. The scale. Okay, we got some Ziploc bags here with some white powder residue in it. Let's see what we find. The scale. Okay, we got some Ziploc bags here with some white powder residue in it. I'd guess it to be a gram, maybe two grams of uh, methamphetamines. We're going to send that to the lab and have that tested. What I noticed immediately is that the Ziploc bags that I recovered out of the black case, they don't match the Ziploc bag that was recovered out of his pocket. It's, it's subjective at this point, I would say. He probably is distributing. He's got several different packaging options here. I would say that's probably a good guess. So we'll go ahead and use that as evidence against him. On the impound lot, Unbelievable. Trooper Eister makes a sinister discovery. Something I think is it's a value to uh, show other law enforcement officers is right here. He could have easily reached and gotten this knife and given me a good stick with it. And I, I never saw it from where I was standing. It's one of them things as a cop that you don't know what's there sometimes. You know, there's a gun or a knife or whatever the case might be. In this case, the guy had a knife. Not only did he have a knife, but he had it in a place where he could easily access it and lunge at me with it. And I wouldn't have seen it coming. That would have hurt. And it's only the tip of the iceberg. The lighter, a little bag, and a cotton top from a Q-tip. Typically, IV drug users take the Q-tip, and they draw the drugs through that, like a filter. A little push rod. You use that in the pipe. Clear it out. I can see a bag sticking out of that thing already. Let's see what we got here. Hot pipe. Nice Tonto blade. Chinese stars. Maybe he was a ninja. Uh, there's a meth pipe right here in the dog bowl. In the state of Alaska with residue in it, just like that in and of itself is a felony. There we go. It's enough for Eister to forward several charges to the district attorney's office for possible prosecution. He'll be charged with misconduct involving a controlled substance six, and he'll also be charged with misconduct involving a controlled substance four, which is a felony in the state of Alaska. I'll wait until I get my lab results back so it's more rock solid, which builds a better case. If convicted on all charges, he could be facing more than five years behind bars. We got a guy with a couple of warrants, a guy that's using meth. It's a good catch. 230 miles south in the Matsu Valley. 3524, go ahead. Only 24, 1019, Little Otter, or an NBA Delta, following a moose. The moose just went under the complaint car, busted his back leg. The moose is laying down. Only 24, 1019 from the hospital. There's a crash versus a moose. Sounds like the moose broke its back leg, and the vehicle's just pulled off the roadway. We'll get up there, see what happened, what kind of damage there is to the vehicle, and see if the moose is going to be able to make it or if it's going to have to get put down. Moose are the largest North American land mammals next to bison, and the Alaskan subspecies is the biggest on Earth, reaching up to 1,600 pounds. An estimated 200,000 of these creatures inhabit the state. And moose versus motorist collisions are more common in the Matsu Valley than anywhere else in the world. Just in our area alone, I've seen some years, you know, where there's been 350 moose killed on the highway. So, you know, one a day on average. And Darby has little time to waste. 2024, the moose is now wandering around. 2024, the moose got out of the tank car, up to the back legs, he's wandering around. Can you 21 and see if we need to upgrade? All right, we're about half a mile away. 
there's a crash versus a moose. It sounds like the moose broke its back leg and the vehicle's just pulled off the roadway. But as Trooper Darty approaches the area... I'm guessing the guy to the left. Mac, I'm be 24. Was it on Edgerton Park or was it down the side road? I'm not sure you to complain it back and see where he's at. There's no sign of the vehicle or moves. Darby fears the driver could now be trying to cash in on the crash. A lot of people will then just try to take them. The moose has a lot of meat on it, so it can feed a family for quite a while. And in reality, they got to go to a charity. I think it was back down that side road. Maybe right here. Darby arrives to find just the driver. Is the moose still here? I don't see it. She's unharmed, but still shaken from the accident. That's what? where it came out. Oh, right there. came out of their yard here? Right into me. Okay. Oh, yeah, it did. I'm just, I'm more of a broken hearted over the moose. Okay. It couldn't stand up. It actually laid in the middle of the road for a little bit. Okay. And its back leg looked broken. You didn't see it like dangling or anything like that? It did look like it was dangling, but then I kind of started thinking, you know, as she's holding it. Just kind of holding it up. Okay. Yeah. And then it went off in there and just stared back for a long time. Okay. Let me take a walk in here real quick. Um, I'll just see if I can see her, see if she needs to be put down or not. Are you allowed to shoot them if their leg is broken? We are. Not going to be 24. I'll be on foot to the east of my vehicle looking for the moose. Trooper Darby must keep his gun at the ready for self-defense in case the half-ton cow charges him. They have, you know, a couple broken legs or a really bad broken leg, we'll dispatch them. But if they're moving around, they're too big and wild of an animal to try that. Oh. Maybe right here. I'm not gonna go too much further. If it's went this far, it's probably gonna be fine. With daylight fading, Darby decides to call off the search. He files an incident report for the woman's insurance and lets her go. The second one that hit me. Oh, so you've actually been hit by two moose? Yeah. But you've never hit a moose? Never on the front, <laughs> no, always in the side. So they run into you? Yeah. I guess if you live in Alaska long enough, you're going to hit a moose at some point, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, if it walked off, it's probably going to be okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Back north in Fairbanks. 2033. 30, go ahead. 19. Reports there's a male subject to the outside of the bar now. He's very intoxicated, might be urinating on the building, acting kind of odd. Except for Conrad, no response until we get further. We're being dispatched to a strip club. There's an intoxicated guy that's outside of it, maybe urinating on the building. We're pretty close to the area, or like a mile. February 2033, 1023. I'll let that subject and another in the parking lot. Are you with the with the club? Yes. Okay. What's going on, buddy? We just got uh, our building came in like he's trying to bite people. What's going on? What's going on? Where'd you come from? Apparently, pissed on Melbourne. Yeah. Why were you doing that? I wasn't. Okay. Well, can you hurry up and put your belt on? <coughs> can you put your belt on? I did. It's not on. All right. Put it on What's that? <laughs> Where's your, where's your wallet at? It's Nowhere. in his front pocket. Do you have an ID with you? Can you give me your ID? Nope. Okay, well, I'm asking you to give me your ID. He gave it to you. It's in your side pocket, honey. Oh, there it is. Nope, that's your cell phone. <laughs> Do you have an ID with you? Can you give me your ID? Nope. Okay, well, I'm asking you to give me your ID. It's in your side pocket, honey. Oh, okay. In his front pocket. There it is. Nope, that's your cell phone. And you're probably going to break it, so you should put it back in your pocket, okay? <laughs> oh, God, huh? It's in your side pocket. Dude. Could you please get your wallet out? NCIC 133. Unsure of the man's state of mind, Mulvaney calls for backup. He's almost stumbling over. He looked completely wasted drunk. You know, it was within a couple feet of him, and I could tell he was kind of playing a mind game on whether he was going to fight or not. 
and it definitely seemed like he was going down the path, trying to do something with me, so it definitely had the hair on the back of my neck standing up. Do you have somewhere to go? No. Okay, well, it's time to go now, okay? You're going to come with me. I'd really like to do this the easy way, so turn around and put your hands behind your back. No, no way. Really Let's walk back this way real quick, okay? Yeah, let's do that. Safe travel, sir. Mulvaney safely detains the man, but has no crime to arrest him on. Sit right here. If you were inside there when I got here, drunk on license premise for sure. But now, troopers have a new problem. It's from Anchorage. How'd you get here from Anchorage? No. Where were you staying? Anchorage. Okay, where were you staying in Fairbanks? I got nowhere to go. So you don't have anywhere to go? Nope. The other option is to go to sleep off tonight. I mean. Sleep off is jail, but you're only there for 12 hours. Right on the Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. Have a seat. Help me. Well, you can you can do it yourself. I can't. I'm not getting near your feet. I can't do it myself. I'm not gonna get near your feet and have you kick me. So just get in the car. I'll do it. I'll push you up and you're ready. Ready? Let's do it. Uh... <laughs> It's still getting 40, 35 degrees at night, so he could die if he stays outside. So it's important for him to go in there, spend some time, get sober, then he can go do whatever he was doing before. A little piss before the... Just hold it. I was pretty sure he was going to score after me. That's why I was waiting until you got here to do a hands-on with him. He looked like he was, yeah, he was about bucking up. He was, for sure. He might still. We'll see. Everything ends well in Fairbanks. But back south, just outside of Palmer, Trooper Chuck Withers races to save a seriously injured mountaineer before night falls and temperatures plunge. So we got a search and rescue in this area called the uh, Lazy Mountain Trailhead. Got a male that was back off this trail and decided to get up in a tree and then jump down. He has two broken legs. Medics are out there right now. They can't find him. We got a helicopter out there looking for him. He could be bleeding out. He could go into shock, and if he passes out, he won't be able to respond to our attempts at locating him. So we really need to find him soon. But if they've been looking for him for a while and have a helicopter and haven't found him yet, it's probably going to be close to impossible. Daylight's precious right now. We probably have another hour of daylight, and it's cold. It's probably hovering around 5 degrees, and it's supposed to get into the negatives later tonight. I mean, he could definitely die from exposure, so we're kind of at a time crunch here. As Withers approaches the trailhead, he spots the rescue helicopter. Oh, he's way up there. If there's fresh snow on the ground, you could track his footprints all day, but as it is now, the snow is pretty much ice. It's very, very difficult to find him. Uh, there's all the medics and fire crew. Back at 1B32, 1023. What's up, guys? So, I'm found him there, you have. If they're going to find the climber, it may have to be on foot. It's really icy. The trail is icy. The temperatures drop it quick, and you know, there's not much daylight left. So you don't want to send 10, 11 paramedics up there without absolutely needing them. You want to make sure all your bases are covered and you're doing it the safest way possible. So hopefully they can just snatch him up and put him up in the helicopter right now instead of putting more lives at risk going to try and find him. The rescue chopper still can't find this stranded hiker with two broken legs. So rescuers must scale the mountain on foot before night falls. The trail is icy. Temperatures drop it quick and, you know, there's not much daylight left. So you don't want to send 10, 11 paramedics up there, putting more lives at risk going to try and find them without absolutely needing them. But just as the ground crew is about to start their ascent, the chopper finally spots its target. Back on 32. It looks like the life net has located him up the mountain there. Seeing if they can find a place to land now. Yeah, he's way up there. But life net can't find a safe landing zone in the harsh terrain. Has the pilot said anything else? Where the guy's at? Probably have to be winched out. But the chopper isn't equipped with that critical piece of machinery. I have that funny feeling we're going to need RCC. They call the RCC the Rescue Coordination Center, a 24-hour search and rescue service to deploy a second helicopter from the Alaska Air National Guard. 
the chopper is, is looking for a spot to land right now. They think they found a spot. I can't see him anymore, and they've been advised that we need to know as soon as possible whether or not RCC will be needed. So we're just kind of waiting on the pilots up there telling us uh, yay or nay. The chopper executes a tricky landing, but the hiker isn't out of the woods yet. Now, rescuers must reach the man, then safely transport him back across the rugged terrain to the chopper. If the medics up there can't pull him out, these guys are going to head up there while the National Guard chopper goes out. But right now, they're just on standby. Twenty five hundred feet below, Trooper Withers can only watch and wait. They had to hike down the mountain to get to him. They're gonna put him on some kind of backboard or something and try and pull him up the mountain to their helicopter, but still you're hiking up the side of a mountain in the middle of the winter in Alaska. Nothing's a gimme, even when uh, conditions are good. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Hey, uh, looks like that life med got him back to the chopper and they're going to be heading out. So Withers calls off the second chopper. All right, thanks. But they're just getting them all situated right now. And in about five, ten minutes, they're going to lift off and head to uh, the hospital. After two hours on the mountaintop, the injured and scared hiker is on his way home. There you go. It could have been a heck of a lot worse. Obviously, young man broke his legs, but, you know, if that's, if that's the worst thing that happened, you know, nobody else was hurt, and he's off to, to go to see a doctor now, so definitely could end it a lot worse, but uh, all's well, it ends well. Across town. We're going to try and catch up with this car up here. It appeared the guy was weaving. It looked like he almost crossed the center lane into our lane there for a minute, and then he was uh, hitting the... The shoulder of the road a couple of times when I was watching through the rearview mirrors. The so. problem is trying to get around this guy in front of us to catch up with him. we got to figure out where he went. No. No. There he is. The vehicle turns into the parking lot of a local bar. 31, 10, 36. You're right, parking lot of uh, occupied by three or four. Howdy, gentlemen. Hey, I'm Trooper Steen. A couple of things. You got to have a plate light on this car, and when you were coming down the road back there at me, you were dry wandering all over the road. How come? Because he was trying to pull him here, and he didn't know. Okay. Yeah, that was way back, th back up there. Do you guys get your IDs with you tonight, please? Is ID over there with you, partner? Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. NCIC 1B31. He runs their info through dispatch. Go ahead and discovers that one of the passengers has a past. The backseat passenger is actually on probation for felony DUI, not supposed to be at any place that serves alcohol. He's not supposed to be consuming alcohol. 10-4, go ahead and get a hold of his PO. He's been drinking. It looks like I'll be getting him out, and we'll talk with him. Yeah, well, yeah bud, come talk with me, partner. Hey, come on over here for me real quick, man. Keep your hands out your pockets for me, bro. You're not under arrest, but I need to make sure you got nothing on you, okay? You on probation still? Yeah. You're not supposed to be drinking, are you? Yeah. How come you're in a car with booze and going to a bar, my man? I am just drinking right with me. How much you been drinking tonight? I haven't been drinking. You haven't been drinking at all? No. So if we give you a PBT, if your PO asks me, you're going to pass? Yeah. Come on over here with me real quick, man. Over here in front of the car for me real quick. Look at me once. Can you see my finger right here? Watch my finger with your eyes. Don't move your head, okay? Let's try it again. How much did you have to drink? How much you been drinking tonight? I haven't been drinking. You haven't been drinking at all? No. So if we give you a PBT, if your PO asks me, you're going to pass? Yeah. Because you smell like alcohol, too. Well, I, I haven't been drinking. Okay, have a seat right here on the, on the push bumpers of my car for me, okay? And don't move. Trooper Steen decides to take a breath sample. Any trace of alcohol in the man's system could land him back behind bars. Big city breath. Keep going, keep going. Blow hard. Blow hard. Okay. Go stand up for me here real quick. Put your hands back for me. Bring your hands down here. Breath alcohol is at 1.139, man. How can you tell me you're not drinking? You understand why you're being detained right now, right? No. 
Because you're in violation of your probation, my man. Okay, until your PO decides what he wants to do, I want you to have a seat right there for me, okay? All right. With one passenger in cuffs, Steen turns his attention to the driver. Come on, Come on over here for me. Keep your hands out your pockets for me real quick. Yes, sir. Any weapons on you right now, man? No, sir. No weapons on you? No knives, guns, bombs, hand grenades, bazookas, nuclear weapons, nothing like that? Nothing. Okay, good. go turn around face away from me real quick. You're not under arrest. I just need to make sure you got no weapons, okay? Got weed. Any other drugs on you? Nothing. Just the weed? Nothing. Any other weed in the car? Nothing. Lean up against back the car. You can put your hands, just put your hands down, turn around, talk to me. Okay. How much have you had to drink tonight, man? I had a drink um, about a couple hours ago. Okay. What kind of, what did you have to drink? I had a beer. Okay. All right. Why are you letting these guys drink in the car as you're driving around? Um, well, I was driving around. Okay. To the bar tonight. Oh, okay. But you're letting them drink in a car while you're driving around. So. They can't have an open container of alcohol in a vehicle while you're driving. Trooper Fredericks, with the Bureau of Highway Patrol, arrives to administer field sobriety tests. All right, say face and forwards. If he'd had a beer an hour and a half ago, his, his blood would have actually eliminated at this point in time, and then his body would have eliminated the alcohol. Flow hard. Flow hard in that. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, very good. 131. He's over the limit. I can tell you that he's had more like 10 to 12 beers out of blood alcohol like that, somewhere in that area, not one an hour and a half ago. Driver's going to be processed, taken out of Massive Free Trial upon the post to be processed, and then this guy that I've got the backseat, the probation officer, wants him remanded to uh, jail for probation violation because he's, he's been drinking alcohol tonight. I mean, it's a very good possibility that two miles down the road he could have caused a head-on collision which could have killed somebody or one of the other three individuals in the car with him. 580 miles south in Sitka. The latest class of recruits at the Alaska Public Safety Training Academy are pushing themselves to the limit in hopes of entering law enforcement in the last frontier. Over a grueling 15 weeks, recruits from all over the country take part in the mental and physical crash course designed to weed out the weed. The troopers pride themselves in choosing only the best to wear the badge. So even if these recruits make it through the initial training program, they'll face an additional three weeks of specialized training if they wish to join their ranks. Today, they are being schooled in the task they will likely perform most as troopers. Driving. With the sheer size of their patrol area, some troopers log more than 5,000 miles behind the wheel each month. While responding to calls on ice, dirt, tundra, and constantly changing weather conditions, they are among the best trained patrol officers on the planet. And these recruits are in for a difficult day. Today is day two of the Recruits Emergency Vehicle Operations course, and it's the uh, Precision Maneuver course, and the purpose of it is to uh, teach the student the relationship of their vehicle with regard to fixed objects. All right, now the good part. We've had it explained and demonstrated. Remember the basic skills that we talked about. Don't look at the little cones. If you look at the little cones, you're going to hit the little cones. If you feel you need to make a modification in your steering, slight modification. Basic stuff. There's not going to be any more than three attempts. You should be getting it. Ready to go? Yes, sir. sir. Break away, go. Today's course is a T-shaped trap with cones only six inches away from the vehicle's tires. Recruits must accelerate forward and backward down a 325-foot straightaway and make a high-position three-point turn in each direction. They've got two minutes and five seconds, and they can hit no more than five cones. you got to step back farther than that. If he loses control, I don't want to clean you off the pavement. The most important thing that we have to remember while we're out here is that they're entry-level recruits and there's a 3,000-pound bullet flying around. Each recruit has three chances to pass the course. Failure could mean going home. And some of the recruits have a lot of ground to cover. I want to get you set up for success. And if you keep doing this, like, Austin Powers K-turn thing here, like, you know, that's not going to work, all right? Feel how it feels to do it the right way and then repeat that. Again, the wrong way. Push off your left foot, get high and centered in the vehicle. You saw what I'm saying? Yep. Try that again. All the way, turn it, turn it, turn it all the way. All right, perfect. And swing wide out of here, don't let the rear end cheat. Perfect. It's like a carrot and a stick. All right, let's get someone else in there. There is no pressure, okay? Yes, sir. Nice and relaxed. And go. While some recruits have trouble with the turns, uh, 
You're going too fast. Others are too concerned with a time limit. Even when you missed that turn, we stopped, pulled forward, came up to redo it, and we were still under 205. Yes, sir. Which tells me what? You're going too fast. You're going too fast. This time here, let's make every cone you hit 25 push-ups. How about that? Yes, sir. All right? Maybe that's will slow you down. Yes, sir. And go. Look how good he's doing now. On his second try, the recruit doesn't hit a single cone. You're over by about 25 seconds. But he's way over the time limit. Now just add a little bit of speed. Yes, sir. He has one last chance to pass the course. Try it again. Yes, sir. Third time to charm, right? No pressure. No pressure. Go. Okay, looking good. He's perfectly set up to qualify if he takes his time. And people start wiping out cones right about here. So 151. Good job. Outstanding. In the end, all 18 recruits managed to qualify. But with nine more weeks of training to go, only a select few will earn the distinction of becoming troopers. As you can see, some of these people had difficulty, but they're very resilient bunch. No injuries, learning's occurred. I think they did great.